Hi everybody, this is Hanno the Honda Mackinen, joined by Retro Kaiser again. Yep, again. Yes, and now we are officially playing Gabriel Knight 3. Well, actually, we're watching footage of me playing the game and talking over it, because that's how we have to do this for technical reasons. Wouldn't be the first time, folks. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Oh yeah, because of the fucking Sonic adventure <laughs> thing. Oh yeah, and I highly recommend people go check that out if they haven't. Are you excited for this? Are you excited? Did you did you, you enjoyed? Did you like the second game? Yes, I did. The old Ginger Wolf. Yeah, the old Ginger Wolf. Well, uh, Dean Erickson sadly not in this game. It's Tim Curry again, the same as in the first game. We did the first game with uh, Dorupka, and we did the second game with Retro Kaiser. And now this is the game I really, really wanted to, wanted us to do. Charity Chains. Uh, she's a good voice actor. She was she was actually Elaine Marley in the fourth Monkey Island game, Escape from Monkey Island. Here we have the really stylish intro, which is very stylish and cool, and unfortunately doesn't explain the plot, which is why we did that <laughs> episode zero with the comic. I apologize for my voice work, guys. <laughs> well, now we can hear the professionals do it. <laughs> <laughs> can you think, can you think uh, this was the last adventure game that Sierra did, uh, the old Sierra. Yeah. Nay, no, I'm a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, the unicorn actually turns out to be kind of important. Uh, not an actual unicorn, but thematically, let's say. As we go on. And can you believe this is also the first Gabriel Knight game I ever played? Not really. I, no, I didn't know you back then, so I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Like I went straight into this. I didn't. I never even heard of Sins of the Fathers or The Beast Within. Never played either of them. Just um, jumped straight into this game, and I love it. This is one of my favorite adventure games of all time. But it's it's kind of weird that way. That I, this is where my got into got into the Gabriel Knight series. There's Gabriel with one massive hangover. Yeah. It, it, it went back to kind of its golden color from the original, uh, the first game, but now but he retained like the length that he grew it to in the second game. So it's kind of a yes. weird like combination of like Gabriel from the first game and Gabriel from the second game. I also like how this third game is a different style from the first two. Actually, yeah. all three of them were different styles. Yeah. The first one was more like the classic hand-drawn, second one was full motion video, and this one is like, holy crap, look at my mullet! <laughs> <laughs> this one... <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is very creepy. Did two men with a trunk get off here by any chance? We? Oui? Which way did they go? That way, monsieur. Oh, where are we anyway? Guiza. He's even got the mark from where he got hit. He said Guiza, France, but for the longest time I kept hearing Let the guy was just you. saying, We, oui, we, oui, sir, Je France. Like he's being <laughs> sarcastic. Appreciate oh, yeah, now he said that we were going to rent the chateau. And now it's going to jump uh, into the main menu from here once this cinematic ends, and then it's going to start. We're going to finally start the game. <laughs> This sexy <laughs> intro screen. Oh yeah, and here are the. This time it's uh, the game's not divided into days. Uh, it's divided into time blocks. And here we here we are actually seeing the game itself. So you can move the camera freely. So and I'm feeling with the options. Sorry about that. This doesn't look bad. This style. I like the detail on the roof. Yeah. Got some nice detail in I, this scenery. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there, there was a lot of. For 1998, this is like that really looks good. Like fun. This, this like um could have passed as um as a PS2 game. A white suit and yeah. A boat. And it was this game was being worked on. Suit, period. You know, during the time when Sierra was caught in that um, money laundering scandal. So, yeah, this is the last I game that Sierra did before they kind of stopped I making games. Like it. Is that a nipple slip I see? <laughs> the art. Yeah, it's just like, I may not know art, but I like it. <laughs> art, the original pornography. Yeah. The basic wire hanger. Good thing Joan Crawford ain't around. 
there's a really old video of me playing this game where I did not understand the Joan Crawford um, I don't have joke. A damn thing with me. And uh, th it was only subsequently Somebody I realized that there's a movie about something. John Crawford called Mummy Dearest where she screams, "No wire hangers!" And that's what that mm -hmm. I was referring to. Can you hear the vo audio? Yes, I can. All I'm thinking is that must be very uncomfortable stuff, and that I'm um, like that hanger in his pants like that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, this was like really realistic for 3D games at the time, but it is, um... See? Now there's an artist. This camera works really trippy. It's like you're Gabriel, but with the way you control the camera, you're not Gabriel at the same time. It's yeah. like a weird out-of-body experience. Yeah, but I like this because you get to look at all the nooks and crannies of the game world. There weren't really any other adventure games that <coughs> allowed you to do that. Little family in the grass. How domestic. Now, the reason he jumped like that there uh, was because I hit escape, and when you do that, Gabriel just kind of snaps into the location where you're trying to go. Okay, here is a... Light. He, he's a witch! You, you spoke Ooh, nice right? Yeah, that was the, That's the Shan Jager dagger. That's what it looks like in this. I went back to my old tape recorder. I've got one of those. The dual mount was a pain to lug around. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about the giant ass tape recorder that Gabriel pieces. was dragging around in his pockets? Use this new program mm -hmm. called Sydney and do all this sort of, you know, official crap. <laughs> so I don't think I'll record my conversations this time around, but I might be able to find some more creative uses for my tape recorder. So yeah, in the first Gabriel Knight, actually, we never showed that when we played with Dorotka, but you actually record all Prince your conversations that you have in the game, and so you can always kind of, you always have a record of what you've said, uh, so if you want to listen for clues and things. The Schottenjäger Talisman. It's kind That's of like a beautiful a looking um, talisman. Only big and heavy. Yep. You, you spoke over the line when he when I looked at the talisman. You know, Tim Curry does. It's one of my favorites. Is the way he says it is my shot and Jagger dagger. <laughs> okay, and now we're about to meet one of the most inconsequential characters, ah, Jean the receptionist. Night in room twenty-five. <laughs> my name is Jean. If there's anything you need. I will be at your service most humble. I love the uh, pause between thanks. there's anything you need. Is there anything I should know about the town? Rennes le Chateau? We have a small town. Oh yeah, and sorry about the uh, messy uh, pixels. I'm playing this with the software just renderer. Just the, uh, the game will not run properly on my graphics card because it's too way too advanced. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, all their eyes in this game but sort of makes them look a bit stoned. Night, oui? <laughs> this was kind of, well, yeah, this was... As to their luggage, I cannot say. Well, they're, you know, they're just textures all Maybe over the character model. But this was a lot of work well, to do exactly back in the day, and this was the, this was really the only way you could, could have facial expressions because the character models were still kind of blocky, as you can tell. You know, they can have a lot of definition. They did a good job with the mouth animation, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Looks like these I can't make out those scribbles. Within the last 24 hours. Uh, that, that's too bad. You could maybe make out Gabriel's uh, scribbles there. We're about to meet one character very soon. Uh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, this is where I was trying to look for it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I'm going to wait until we actually get to it. Well, that's cheerful. Makes me feel right at home. <laughs> I love the comments he has about the... Uh, the uh, painting, so that's why I keep clicking on them. <laughs> Our first inventory item that we pick up. The oh, no, 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 it's not. Oh, yeah, hey, this is another great line. It ain't Godiva chocolates, but sugar is sugar. <laughs> sugar <laughs> is sugar. <laughs> I don't remember what I did, actually, in this part. Okay, yeah, that was, that was what I was doing. So I was waiting for Jean to leave work. so we can steal the... We can nick the marker from the table. Gabriel won't take it if Jean is there. Just kind of teaching you that uh, in this game world, you the physics matter. Okay, here's one of my favorite scenes in the game. If that's what I think it is, I can die a happy man. Oh, great. And the only bad thing about the software renderer is that you can see the coffee pot. It looks really, really blocky. 
Doesn't look like that block. Hey, was, uh, how about some coffee out here, Mercy? <laughs> <laughs> Have you recognized the guy with the newspaper Hi, yet? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Gabriel Knight, you wanker. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> yeah. No, it's my evil twin. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here, Knight? <laughs> what am I doing here? What are you doing here? I love the Gabriel I'm and Mosley's uh, relationship in this game. I'm here with the it's way more like... Group. What kind of you know, group? they're really like you know, insulting each you know, other a lot in this game. It's it's just hilarious. <laughs> well, Gabriel, it's now you wanker. Uh, you wanker. <laughs> it's a special treasure hunt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, so, sadly, this is not Mark Hamill That's doing right. reprising the role. It's a different actor. But actually, I like this actor better than Mark Hamill. All due respect to Mark Hamill. You know, he did a great job as Mosley in the first so game. But what are you doing here again? Yeah. Um, I came to see you. What? Sure. I called your number at the post. Right, of course. I forgot I mentioned it. Yeah, and he's being a bit evasive about the fact that he's a police officer. He'll explain yeah. later why. If you want to join a tour, you'll have to talk to Madeline uh, Boothang. She's around here somewhere. And uh, come up to the room later, would you? I don't know why. That, that looked like he winked at Gabriel. <laughs> and, uh, and that's for surprise. I've never me. noticed that before oh, in this game. I don't think he uh, usually does it. I'm no not problem. sure if that's a bug. Or if it's just an animation that doesn't always play correctly. Because that's the one thing, like you said about the facial expressions, but the timing of them really depends on how the game is running. And so there are things that can make like offset Rosie, the timing a little bit so characters do do facial expressions at kind of odd times. As confused as I am. So I don't know. that It, it, it kind of looked like he, he was winking there. <laughs> I think he was coming on to him. <laughs> Oh no, no, no more gay werewolf jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, though, I, I loved the second game. Like It was hilarious. Are we gonna go talk to Emilio yet? Yeah, we are. Here's Emilio, Baza. Hey, how you doing? My name is Knight, Gabriel Knight. Those are really big newspapers and really tiny hands. And I am Emilio <laughs> Baza. Emilio? Interesting name. Where are you from, anyway? The Middle East, originally. Ah. Hey, you with that tour group by any chance? I am. Yes. Yes, I am. This is the kind nice of game place, uh, no. where, uh, for nice? instance, you get to yes. collect Not people's fingerprints way. and... Um, you drive in? Uh, what, 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 once we get the... Once we get the uh, the motorcycle uh, and we get to move around with it, uh, we also can rec we can also write down people's registration plates. So, and the game opens up a lot depending on how many clues you pick up. So it's the kind of game where um, it rewards you for being kind of perceptive. I would not presume to say, Mr. Knight, at least not out loud. It's actually one of the few adventure games that has a lot of replay value because you can kind of gun through the game the first time and not, like, learn much about these characters. It's the hotel registry. Hmm. These must be the people on the tour group. And the reason I keep looking at the registry is because Gabriel says different things once you uh, discover a little bit more. Okay, and now we're going to call Prince James and tell that his baby got kidnapped. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure he's already noticed. <laughs> I should call Sounds like a really James. bad Michael Jackson song. I I had his number <laughs> somewhere. What? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Prince James, my baby got kidnapped. Eh. Uh, yeah, and it's like, um, this is also like, Rennes le Chateau is a real place, and it's in the south of France. You know, so we rode all across the country uh, on that train. This is Gabriel Knight calling for Prince James. This is weird because you don't One normally moment. see telephone booths like this anymore. Oh yeah, you can tell it was the late nineties. What in God's name? I oh, know. And it, also because they still use francs in this. It's, this was before they started. They adopted the euro. Your son. I followed them, but I couldn't catch up. They went to the train station and boarded a train for Toulouse. I believe they got out of a little place called Cuiza. I'm still trying to... And this is actually really impressive because this place, Rennes-le-Chateau, actually exists. It's a real place. Yeah. 
Rennes and there's Chateau. several real locations yes. in the town of Rennes Chateau that Gabriel, they've completely I... like uh, recreated Thank in this game. Very much for informing and we're going to be seeing I those. Uh, there's the church, the graveyard, and then there's this tower called Tour Magdala and a bunch of other places so it's I'll send down so it's a little bit like in the second game how they use like real photographs what makes you as the backgrounds in that involved? game I I don't have time to explain I'm still yeah, impressed with the detailing in this in the in the like I'm, all the I'm glad, and I'm glad, glad you are you're impressed because uh, I'm have I always have a hard time getting people to actually get into this game because of this look. <laughs> I mean, for a game for 1998, it's incredible. Like a lot of games around this era is just you know just blank colors for walls, but they put in the detail, making all the walls like different wallpaper. Yeah. Actually, even that roof in the opening scene. That back back wall looks like really pixely right now again that's simply because I'm using the software renderer like if you used an, an actual uh, 3d modeler um, I mean uh, an actual 3 3d acceleration that that wall would actually look a lot nicer a lot of the details would look a lot smoother um, and it's and like I said it's only for technical reasons why I keep using it uh, it's also weird, like, some uh, some character details, actually, when we meet uh, Lady Howard, uh, she wears, like, an, she wears, like, an ascot on her, and it changes color depending on whether you're playing with software graphics or not. In software graphics, it's yellow, and in the, if you have acceleration on it, it turns green, which is weird. <laughs> You've got a, tour a very interesting game. special feature to have, that's oh, for sure. Mm. We have only the seven rooms and they have taken every room I also love the score in this game. Room. Robert Holmes is... If I might uh, say, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more laid back, although there are kind of more heavier moments later in the game. Oh, yeah. But this, this piano-heavy score, I really, really dig it. Do you know anything about the tour group, Jean? No, monsieur. You shall have to speak with the mouth of the horse itself. And this feels also the most like kind of like a detective game at the first, at the beginning, at the beginning, because I had no idea. I, I had no idea, like I said, I, because I didn't read the freaking comic. I didn't know that there were vampires in it, or that I was looking for a baby. I knew that I was just this guy, and I'm looking for these two men with a trunk. The elephant man. <laughs> Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh, you don't mean oh, you don't mean those kinds of trunks. <laughs> oh, that's always looks really weird when Gabriel don't walks right I through do. you. I just I, I looked at her and Gabriel just said, "Don't mind if I do." <laughs> <laughs> this is Madeline Buffain, so she's a central character in the game as well. She's a tour group leader. Well, hi. Her dress you blends in with the background a bit much. Perhaps. Who are you? Gabriel Knight. You know Mosley from your tour? We go way back. Uh -huh. I should have recognized the accent. <laughs> what accent? I love it that I love her hand going through so, to her hair. Like I know what they were trying to do. Oh, like she's yeah running her hand through her hair a little bit, but it looks like it's going inside her head. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me while I go and touch my brain. <laughs> this is the price of success. Do you wish to find the treasure or not? And also, uh, think about it. sharp-eared listeners will notice that this is, of course, Jennifer Hale doing the voice. Whoa, look at that massive cock in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I am, I am, I totally agree with you. I do think it's a cock, but they keep insisting that it's a chicken. Um, no, I've got, <laughs> no, I've, I've got a family that has um lots of pet chickens and roosters. That's definitely a rooster. Yeah. <laughs> chickens do not have big tail feathers like that. Well, they just introduced a bunch of the characters by name, uh, Mr. Wilkes, so Lady Howard, Estelle. Uh, that's, the thing I, that's another thing I love about this game. I love the characters, and you spend a lot more time with them in this game than 
probably the characters of most of the other Gabriel Knight games. Okay, the second game was actually pretty good. Like, you got to know the Hunt Club guys pretty closely. And the lawyer guy as well. Uh, but uh, in the first game, for instance, there's a lot of, like, throwaway characters that you only ever really talk to once and then never again. And that always kind of bugs me about adventure games is when they have a lot of throwaway characters. Oh, and I think I misclicked there, so I was supposed to click the treasure chest icon to ask her about the treasure. So, you're the expert, right? What's your theory about the yeah, treasure? The thing that's, I said before, the thing that's bothering me about the scene is the bottom of her legs there is blending too much with the ground. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, like that's, another thing, with... that's another thing that would be fixed if I played this with, uh, you know, accelerated graphics, but because I'm playing with software graphics. That... Well, gee, I don't need a live chicken at the moment. <laughs> Must not be a lot of cats around here. Okay, and here's the, uh, that's the line that... Ooh, reminds me of the present the voodoo group left me. Yuck. Yeah, did you, do you remember the present the voodoo group left, Gabriel? <laughs> that, that pluck chicken. I think it's a bookstore. <laughs> yeah. Gee, that book looks interesting. And you can barely make it out, but that's actually the novelization of the second game that's, uh, being... Uh, and Jane Jensen's picture there in the bookstore window. Sangria. And here's an important clue. Holy Grail. Sangria. Wasn't that what the two men on the train said? Why would they be talking about? Yeah, we 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 um, talked over the intro, but actually one of the guys who knocked Gabriel out, out did say Sangria uh, on when we were on the train. So the Holy Grail is somehow linked to all of this. Guess he's getting some fresh air. Yeah. Wouldn't be a mystery if it wasn't for supernatural elements like that. Yeah, but Emilio came out when we came out, and now when we try to talk to him, he goes back in. So oh, so much for that. Idea. So uh, something fishy going on with Emilio Baza. <laughs> Almost immediately, we <laughs> he's not exactly very stealthy. <laughs> hmm. I, I, here I am going for the registry again. Sorry about this. According to the register, Mr. Baza arrived before me. And Buccelli sometime after. Buccelli. <laughs> Even though it's pronounced Buccelli. <laughs> yeah. Gabriel, Gabe's a real asshole. He just keeps calling him Buccelli. <laughs> Even after you introduce, uh, get introduced, which is actually comes a bit later in the game. Well, not too much later, but it, it's um, it, the second time block. So this game is divided into time blocks, and when you do a certain number of key actions, the time of the day progresses. Um... And if there's like any extra stuff that you can want to do, you have to do it before you do all the key story things, or uh, you, you or you basically miss miss out on them. This, place? Mm, this is a creepy looking place. Night. It's a museum. The name is Night. Makes a, sense. A, and you are yeah. And this is where we begin to learn about if you if you bother to go and read. Well, that that'll be in the next episode. Uh, we, 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 we learn what the significance of Rennes Chateau is, the place, the real-life place. And now, we're, now we're just questioning the, uh, the mu museum uh, attendant. This reminds me of that annoying lady at the Wagner, not the Wagner Museum, the, uh, the Ludwig Museum, remember? Wh whom we were trying to t t talk to in our terrible German. <laughs> And it was overacting, uh, like... <laughs> good times. So good times. Treasure, like the Holy Grail. Sacred Christian treasure. <laughs> the most famous Grail story written by Wolfenbach was set in Languedoc. Did you know that? Mr. And Languedoc uh, is the, I think, the general of area of France you know. where, um, where you Cuisa and Rennes le Chateau are located. As in the Knights Templars? Oh yeah, and the Templars are yeah somehow related to the plot as well. We'll see that in the next episode as well. We're actually getting very close to the end of this episode. Is there anything special I should know about the town? The displays will tell you the history of Rennes. Yeah, this is actually kind of a pointless conversation. She doesn't really tell us anything until Say, were you around last night? I was until we actually here. take a look oh, at the you didn't displays. Have to see anyone coming into town? Did you late? Around eleven? I am well asleep by then. The early bird catches the worm, you know. <laughs> yeah, and what an incentive that is, too. <laughs> There's supposed to be some oh, what an incentive around that here, too. right? Yes, that is the theory. Well, 
What kind of treasure is this? That is part of the mystery. Yeah, Gabriel's the one guy who asks all the important questions. <laughs> okay. So, what are some of the possible treasures? Gold stones. Oh, man, I don't know what the hell I was doing. The fabulous wealth of oh, the this Vizidas, is kind of funny. Which was never found. The fabulous wealth of the Merovingians, which was never found. Oh, it could be the fabulous wealth of the Cathars, which... Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> the Templars, too, right? But of course, they had more fabulous wealth than anyone. Why do you think that French pig dog of a king turned on them? Um, aren't you French in this region? Well, France thinks so. Okay. Any uh, other theories on the possible treasure? Well, the Romans did destroy the Temple of Jerusalem, stole sacred Hebrew artifacts. Perhaps it is the lost treasure of Jerusalem that is buried around here. And then, there is this one theory. Yes? Ah, never mind. I am a good Catholic woman myself. And we'll find about that theory that she's very elusive about a bit later in the game, actually. Well, well, one really disturbing thing is that you can look, see up Gabriel's neck there. When you look up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm saving the game, and that the, marks the end of the episode. Any last words before we cap it off here for the first one? See you on the next one, folks. Hopefully I say more. All right. <laughs> see you on the next one. Bye.